At the start of the war, the Soviet Union and Germany surprised the world by signing an alliance. In August 1939, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact guaranteed mutual respect for territorial ambitions. Moscow stood by as Hitler invaded Poland in 1939. Berlin allowed Stalin to occupy the Baltic states in 1940. The pact gave Hitler time to wage war in Europe, but by 1941, his success in France meant he no longer needed Moscow as an ally. Hitler always intended to invade Russia. In Mein Kampf, he envisaged it as a huge German colony, giving the Reich natural resources and the Lebensraum, or living space, it needed. Stalin had also used the time to overhaul the Red Army, whose command had been decimated by the purges of the 1930s. But his time ran out. As he watched the May Day Parade in 1941, three million German troops were massing on the Ukrainian border. On June the 22nd, 1941, Operation Barbarossa began. Hitler was sure he could take Russia in a matter of months, and at first the German army advanced almost unchecked. They shattered the Red Army's defences, and the Russians withdrew into the heartland. In the first three months of the invasion, Russia lost nearly three million soldiers, as Germany took Minsk, Kiev, Smolensk, and Sevastopol, sweeping through Ukraine and southern Russia, and to the north as far as Leningrad. Hitler then turned his sights on Moscow, and by October 1941, German troops reached the capital. Stalin kept his nerve and stayed on in the Kremlin. He summoned Georgi Zhukov from besieged Leningrad and put him in charge of defending Moscow. Within a month, the German army was 25 miles from the city center. But then Russia played her trump card, winter. Temperatures fell to minus 40. German soldiers and their guns froze. But Hitler refused to pull back. Zhukov seized his chance and sent in the Red Army's crack Siberian divisions. Used to fighting in severe winter conditions, they beat the Germans into retreat. By spring 1942, Moscow was saved. The battle for Moscow left Russia's second city, Leningrad, to stand alone against a German siege that winter. By September 1941, the Germans encircled the city, trapping two and a half million people including 400,000 children there. In the autumn, Zhukov masterminded the defense of Leningrad and the Germans were unable to storm the city. So they dug in, determined to starve it into submission. The one supply route across frozen Lake Ladoga brought too little food and by January 1942, 4,000 people were dying of hunger in Leningrad every day. The population suffered horribly but held their city through the winter. Once Moscow was safe, the Kremlin was free to help Leningrad. Spring weather thawed Lake Ladoga and supplies were shipped in to the starving city. The blockade was to last nearly another year, but Leningrad had survived its darkest hour. Meanwhile, the Red Army faced another threat on its southern flank. The German 6th Army's elite panzer divisions were pushing their way towards the rich oil fields of the Caucasus. Stalin ordered his army to make a stand at Stalingrad. The city was to be held at all costs. In July 1942, the Panzers met the Red Army head-on in the city outskirts, at the start of a battle which would last five months. The two armies fought house to house in the streets of Stalingrad. Forced to abandon their tanks, which were easy targets in the city, and to fight without air cover, as German bombers risked hitting their own soldiers, the 6th Army slowed to a halt. Zhukov brought in fresh troops and tanks, and in November 1942, the Red Army launched a counter-offensive. Two columns moved round behind German lines in a pincer movement, trapping the 6th Army inside Stalingrad. Against Hitler's orders, its commanders surrendered. The Russian victory at Stalingrad was the turning point of the war. It checked Germany's advance and dealt a lethal blow to its morale. It also marked the resurgence of the Red Army as a fighting force which could take on Hitler. The first half of 1943 saw a stalemate in the war. 
German troops held their lines in Ukraine and southern Russia, but the Red Army was growing tougher and better equipped with every month. Armaments factories had been moved from the path of advancing German troops to Siberia, where they were rebuilt and a huge production drive was underway. By July 1943, when Germany launched a new offensive, the Red Army was ready for it. The two armies met at Kursk in the biggest tank battle in history. The German army could not break the Russian defences and were forced to withdraw. Zhukov immediately followed and attacked. From this point on, Russia was on the offensive. Hitler's troops withdrew under constant air attack as the Red Army liberated city after city. By November 1943, Kiev was freed, and by April 1944, the Russians had retaken Odessa. Hitler was under pressure on his Western Front and could do little to check the Red Army as it entered Belarusia, Lithuania, Poland, and finally Germany. The battle for Berlin was fierce, as Red Army troops pushed German defenders back, house by house, street by street, to the Reichstag. On May the 9th, 1945, Germany surrendered, and the war in Europe was over. The Red Army returned home heroes. Russia had lost millions of lives, but had emerged as a military superpower. This new status would allow Soviet domination of Eastern Europe and the growth of a formidable military-industrial complex during the Cold War years. It was a military tradition encouraged by the Kremlin and sustained by a nation who still remembered the horrors of the war and the friends and relatives they had lost. But 50 years on, the military tradition is tarnished. The army is accused of corruption and embroiled in an unsuccessful campaign in Chechnya. Veterans feel betrayed by present-day Russian society. They say Russia has abandoned values of unity, honor, and patriotism for which its soldiers made such sacrifices. There used to be a real feeling of unity amongst all the different... At war's end, Germany was a ruined country. Its cities had been destroyed by Allied bombings and millions of its soldiers and civilians were dead.